a year since I made my last everyday carry video. And since we're approaching 2023, I thought it might be a good time to update you on the things that I carry every day. I want to show you three different sort of sets of things that I carry every day. The first one being the things that I carry literally every time I leave the house. The second one being things I carry in a little messenger bag whenever I leave the house and I think that I might need to do a little bit of work. And the third set being a backpack with all the things I would take, for example, for a weekend or if I would go to an office or something like that. The list of things that I keep on me at all times when I leave the house basically starts with my Apple Watch. This is my Apple Watch Ultra. I use this thing as a phone replacement and you can find my review of the watch here. It basically lives on my wrist at all times, except for when I charge it roughly every two days. I use this watch as a phone replacement, which means that whenever I leave the house, I always have this watch with me and only sometimes take a phone. This sometimes basically comes down to trips where I need GPS and take the car because CarPlay is unavailable on the Apple Watch and with my particular car, I unfortunately also can't pair it using the hands-free so I don't even get turn-by-turn -turn navigation. Other than that, I basically don't need my phone when I'm on the go. If I get phone calls, I use a pair of AirPods Pro. I actually did try the AirPods Pro 2 for a week or so, but I didn't like them too much because I had a weird issue where the center of the audio would be drifting a little bit to the left and right, and so I returned them after roughly a week. They do arguably sound quite a bit better than these AirPods Pro first generation, but since I don't use them for critical listening, and I think on the subway or something, they're easily still good enough, I actually went back to the AirPods Pro first gen, and maybe once the battery dies, I'll actually switch to the second gen. You can see that these are quite used, that's because I have them literally since they launched and I use them every day to take phone calls and stuff like that and also for sort of fun listening while on the go and I think for that they are perfect. The next item that I always carry with me when I leave the house is this wallet by a company called Secret. I really like this wallet because it's very compact and still stores all the cards I need and also some of the cash and stuff like that. I also always have an AirTag in it and a spare SD card in case I forget to put one in my camera. And yeah, that's basically what lives in my wallet. Sometimes I choose to leave the house without my wallet and just use Apple Pay on the Apple Watch, but I don't always do that because one of my credit cards that I use the most unfortunately doesn't support Apple Pay. So for that particular instance, I still take my wallet and then pay conventionally with a credit card using contactless payment. Then recently, I also started carrying the Sony ZV-1 camera almost at all times. I'm also planning to do a review on this quite soon and I'm hoping to explain why I think that this is not something that most people need to take on the go. But for me, I really like it because I don't carry a phone, so I don't have a way of taking pictures if I'm not taking an iPad or a dedicated camera. And this does take better pictures than an iPhone in most situations. The problem is that the path to getting a good picture with this is much more difficult than it is with a smartphone. So the learning curve is quite a bit steeper than with a smartphone and that's why I think most people are probably going to get better pictures with a smartphone than with this in most situations. For me personally, I really enjoyed using this camera in the past few weeks and I use it to take video and photos alike. And that's basically why I'm keeping this in one of my pockets. It's arguably a bit thick, but it's still pocketable. And yeah, so that's the third item and almost the final item. The final thing that I'm carrying in my pockets whenever I leave the house is my keyring basically. I'm not going to show that on video for obvious reasons. So those are the four things I'm keeping in my pocket plus the Apple Watch that I'm keeping on my wrist whenever I leave the house. And with that let's go into the second part of the video and the setup that I use when I think that I'm going to be doing some light work on the go or when I think that I'm going a little bit longer and might need some more gear. Let's start off with the bag that I'm taking. This is a leather bag by a company called Steelord. I bought it quite some time ago on Amazon and I really like it. It basically holds all the things that I think I may need for doing essentially all kinds of work on the go and that's why I like it so much. So let's look at the things that go inside it and I'll also show you the pockets while we're at it. The first thing is that the items that I carry in my pockets mostly go into the bag. On the front of the bag there's this slightly bigger pocket where the camera just simply slides in and then the wallet goes next to it. And then the AirPods Pro I actually still keep in my pocket because taking phone calls with the AirPods Pro in the bag can be a bit of a hassle so I just pull them out of my pocket and they just live there. My keys also keep living in my pocket despite having the bag. The next thing that goes into the bag is this power bank by a company called Anchor. I'm still using this one from last year and it's still gonna fit next to the wallet. And on top of it goes this USB-C charging brick. This is actually something I changed because it's really compact and small it actually does deliver 15 watts, which is plenty for the things I need it for. And yeah, it's sort of slim enough to still fit in here. Then the final thing going into the front of the back is this USB-C hub, again from Anker. I can connect HDMI to it, normal sized and micro SD card. 
It has a USB-C power delivery port, which means that you can basically pass through power, for example, to an iPad. Then what I really like about this particular dock is that it gives you a normal USB-C data port, which most of these docks don't, so I can still connect USB-C accessories and you get two USB-3 ports. So with that, that's the front of the bag taken care of. In the big compartment of the bag lives this iPad Pro from 2020. I actually didn't find a reason to upgrade to the M1 or M2 iPad Pros because Apple did release Stage Manager for this generation of iPads after all. And I don't really need the capability of connecting it to a bigger screen because for that I actually do use a Mac. So this is my on the go kind of device that I'm taking to do any kind of somewhat serious work. And I think that it's still amazing for it. The only thing I'm missing is 5G connectivity, but I think for me personally, it's currently not worth the upgrade. So this iPad goes into the bag as well. And depending on what I think I'm gonna be doing, I either take it just as the iPad or I take it in the magic keyboard case. The final thing going into my messenger bag is a bunch of cables. Let's look at all of them. The first one is this USB 3 cable that I always carry with me. I really like this, it's quite short, but it's capable of delivering 100 watts of power, so I can charge anything I want with it, and it's quite fast. So this one has never let me down, and I'm keeping this one with me. The next cable is a USB-C to lightning cable. This I only keep to charge AirPods in a pinch. The next cable is an older Apple Watch charger. The reason is that I don't have a spare USB-C Apple Watch charger that supports fast charging, but honestly I never need this. It's just there for emergencies, so I'm totally fine with using this and yeah, I'm not buying a new one at this point. And finally, I have a USB-C to micro USB cable, at this point almost exclusively for the ZV-1 because it doesn't have a USB-C port. So this cable currently has to come with me until I maybe at some point upgrade to a camera with USB-C. All of these cables actually find space in a little internal pocket behind the iPad. And then I'm gonna close that and the whole bag just closes shut like this. So this is the messenger bag and this is my setup for when I leave the house for longer than a few hours basically and if I anticipate that I need to do any work on the go. Let's go to the final and third setup that I'm taking when I, for example, go for a weekend somewhere or when I need to go to an office to do some really serious work. Then this is where this comes in. This is a backpack that has been featured on YouTube many, many times, and I wasn't sure if I'm gonna buy into the hype, but after all, I did order one and try it, and I absolutely love it. It's the Everyday Backpack by Peak Design, and this is actually the smaller size, because for even longer trips, I'm then gonna probably take a carry-on and not a backpack anymore. What I love about this backpack is simply the variety and the flexibility of it. You can basically adjust it to any sort of load that you wanna put into it, and I'm gonna show you how I load it in the next few minutes. Let's start with the inner main compartment of the backpack. I divided this into three different sections. On the bottommost section of the backpack, I'm keeping this cable pouch by a company called Backsmart. Let's just take a super quick tour of the stuff that I keep in the cable pouch. The first thing is this Apple USB-C charger. This is actually an 87 watt unit that I got with my previous MacBook Pro. I use it to charge my current 14 inch MacBook Pro that we'll get to in a second and it's plenty of power for that to be honest. I also use it to charge literally everything else. So if I'm on a weekend trip, for example, and I need to charge my watch and my iPad and my MacBook, then I will just plug my MacBook into this and everything else into the MacBook and then everything charges off of one power brick in one socket. The next thing is an HDMI cable that I take simply because in some hotels you can just connect the HDMI cable to the TV, connect the other side to your MacBook or to your iPad and then just watch your own movies on the TV. Going through the rest of the cable pouch, we have a MagSafe to USB-C cable that I use with my MacBook Pro. We have two sort of shorter USB-C cables that I use to charge, for example, my iPad and other USB-C stuff like my camera. I have a USB-C to USB-A cable that I very rarely use, but sometimes I seem to need it. Then I have a micro USB to USB-A cable that I use very rarely to connect micro USB accessories. And then I have a USB-C to lightning cable that I use for my AirPods almost exclusively. On the other side, I have a USB-A to USB-C adapter that I can basically use to convert all of these cables into a USB-A cable. I sometimes use this because some charging bricks only take USB-A and yeah, then it basically gives me an extra port. Sometimes I also use it to get an extra USB-C port on the Anchor USB hub if I basically lack another USB-C port. The other thing is a 6.3 millimeter to 3.5 millimeter headphone adapter. And the final thing is an Anchor USB-C to Ethernet adapter that supports two and a half gigabit Ethernet. I use this to connect to one gigabit ethernet almost all the time, but then sometimes I also use it to connect to my NAS using two and a half gig ethernet. And then the whole thing basically perfectly fits into this bottom pocket of the backpack. The next pocket right above my cable pouch is reserved for my camera. 
Since the camera that goes here is currently filming this YouTube video, I'm just gonna use the lens, but basically my R6 with a 24 to 70 lives in this pocket. What I do is basically I fold the side of this next pocket up so that the body of the camera can go into the slightly bigger compartment and then the lens basically reaches down into the pocket. With that, let's close down this side of the backpack and move to the other side. I needed to switch the sides here because this middle compartment is now not reachable from the other side anymore. The two things that live in this middle pocket, first of all is this tiny umbrella. Now this thing saved my life more times than I can count, so it always goes in the backpack. And for those of you wondering what the headphone adapter was for, it's for these. This is a pair of Sony MDR7506 headphones. I essentially use these for listening to music in higher quality on the go, for mixing some audio when I'm on the go and also for cutting videos. They live in this sort of pouch thing and then also go into the middle pocket. And that actually wraps the main compartment up. The top compartment of the backpack actually stays empty. I use it to drop stuff into the backpack from the top and there's nothing living in there permanently. I just drop things in there when I basically have something out of the ordinary that wants to go in the backpack. With that being said, we can now go into the side pockets. The first one from the bottom houses these three things. The first one is the anchor power bank that we already saw before. And then next to it goes this USB-C M.2 SSD with the corresponding USB 3.1 cable. I basically use this drive for editing videos. It's a one gigabyte drive, so it basically always holds my like last two-ish projects because I don't want to put too much load on the SSD in the MacBook Pro because I mean they do wear over time and it's much cheaper replacing this SSD after some time than replacing the one in the MacBook Pro. Then in the top compartment of this side of the backpack lift these two things. This is a FIO BTR5 headphone amplifier. It can either be used as a USB-C headphone interface and then you basically get a quite good headphone amplifier that I use with the Sony headphones. But this can also be used as a Bluetooth receiver, which means that I can pair this to my Apple Watch or my iPad and listen to music using the Sony headphones while using Bluetooth on the go. I basically just clip this to the top of this pocket and then drop the USB-C cable into it here. And finally, I also tend to keep this Logitech crayon in this pocket. Turning the backpack around, let's look at the other side. In this bottom compartment, I keep all the medication that I need to take with me on longer trips and also this battery for my Canon R6. And then in the top compartment here on the side, I'm usually putting the Anchor USB-C hub. I'm putting the USB-C charger, the small one, so I have quick access to it. And finally, a pack of tissues. So this wraps up the main compartment of the backpack, but then turning it around, there's also a pocket for your laptop. In this pocket, I tend to keep this MacBook Pro. This is a 14 inch MacBook Pro with the M1 Pro processor and 16 gigabytes of RAM. This can do almost everything I need to do on a regular basis. And so while I'm on the go, this covers essentially all my computing bases. The one sort of special thing that I do with this MacBook is that I'm keeping this mouse pad that I got off Amazon between the keyboard and the screen. I'm doing this because I noticed that when there's pressure on the screen, sometimes the keys basically stain the screen a little bit. And so I'm keeping this cloth in between and haven't had any issues with it since then. The MacBook then simply goes into the big laptop pocket. And then depending on the occasion, my iPad Pro goes into the separate tablet pocket as well. And that wraps up everything I put in my backpack when I go for a weekend trip or something like that. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please consider hitting the thumbs up button. And if you want to see more like it, I invite you to subscribe to my channel. Again, thank you so much and enjoy your day. See you in the next video. I like to be educated, but I'm so frustrated.